Hey everybody, Sean Tierney here from theautomationschool.com and in today's video, we're going to take a look at adding Ethernet port I.O. to a Control Logic system. Now you can see I'm over in Studio B, which is still not completely wired up yet. And I'm actually testing out some new equipment I purchased uh, secondhand for use in both my Control Logics course and my new Compact Logics course. Um, I'm still filming my Compact Logics course uh, over the next four weeks. I'm going to be filming every day for that. So if you do have an early access copy of that, you'll be seeing a ton of lessons added over the next four weeks. My goal is to just finish it up in the next four weeks. And I wanted to add some point IO to that, uh, distributed point IO. And then uh, after that course is done, I'm going to go back and add more lessons to my Control Logics course to the extended version. So uh, if you know anything about the automation school, you know the extended versions keep growing, uh, you know, every year with new lessons. Um, and uh, if you buy the course, of course, you get all those updates for free. So with that said, the reason I'm doing Point I.O. is, well, the real reason is it's very inexpensive. I mean, Point I.O. and Flex I.O., when you look at buying them used secondhand, um, you can get a Point I.O. module and a base for like under $15. It's just great. It really is. Now, adapters cost a little bit of money, but um, if you're putting together a little test area and you don't have any extra, you know, if they're all in production and you don't have a budget to buy new, then you can really do great with the recycled products. Again, if it's not in production, um, you know, you don't have to worry about, you know, if they're, uh, if they're going to, uh, you know, last for 20 years or whatnot, if you're just using them for training. But in any case, um, in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to look at adding the point IO on Ethernet. And then in the next video, we're going to take a look at doing the same thing on ControlNet. And with that said, let me go ahead and zoom in because I got a, a sequencer um, program already in the control logics. Here I'm using my L63. I got the L7 over in Studio A, but uh, I'm trying to keep all the control net stuff over here because it is kind of a you know legacy type network. So that's why we're using the L63 because that's what I get the control net over here. Love to get an L8. Um, if anybody from Rockwell is watching and you want to ship us over in L8, we'd love to get one for, for uh, our free videos and our training courses. But uh, until that happens, we're, we're going to uh, make do with the L6 and L7 we have here in Insights and Automation Studio. And um, so you can see that output card right there. I bet you I can go in a little bit more too. You see that output card right there? You can see the outputs are going, uh, you know, on and off, on and off, left and right, right? And if we take a look over here in the program, you can see that this is being accomplished with a SQO, right? So I have a timer, a counter, an SQO, and a move. Okay, and this is very similar to the, to the video we did on the SQO. So if we go into the controller tags and we look at the array, you can see here's the numbers that are getting sent out there. Okay, so with that said, our job here is going to be to also send those same values over to the point IO, which I got the uh, overhead cam pointed at right now. You can see it's there, it's just sitting there, not doing anything. So our job is to set the point IO, that's the Ethernet ones on the right, to set the point IO output card to that same bit pattern that uh, the sequencer is uh, generating. So with that said, we'll stop by going offline. And then I'm going to pull up RS links. And if we let the Ethernet IP driver browse, you can see here's my EMBT Series A with my L63 and my IBOB right there. And then here is my AENT, my .135.io Ethernet adapter. And here you can see what I have in the chassis there. I got a IB4, an OB4, and an ASCII module. We're not going to do the ASCII module today. Maybe we'll do it in another, another uh, video in the future. But a couple things I need to know. First of all, my EMBTA is in slot one. And let's see what rev it is here. Device properties, it's a rev six. Okay. So slot one, rev six. Then over here, my ANT, well, we already know it's 135. Let's see what it is. It's a version three revision. I always say version. How about my IB? Let's see here. Device properties. It's a three. And last but not least, my OB4E, that's Rev3. All right. So let's go ahead and add those to our IO tree here. First thing I have to do is add that Ethernet module in. So I will type in ENVT. 
I'm using uh, version 20 because of course I have an L63 here over in Studio B. So that's the latest that uh, you know, the L63 can't go past or the L6X can't go past version 20. So we'll go ahead and create that EMBT. It's slot one. The address was 159, I believe. Uh, we have to give it a name because it's a network module. I'll just call it ENET. And it was version six. So I'm just going to make it match the major rev match. Okay, yes. Okay. And there she is. Okay, let's close this. Come down here and we'll add another new module on the Ethernet network. And this is where I'm going to add my AENT. There it is. Create. And I will call this, let's call it the Ethernet point IO, E P I O. Uh, that was 135. And that was a version three, if I remember. Okay, we're gonna to go to series A. There it is, version three. Now, this chassis size is very important because if you leave it at one, well, you know, I'll just do that on purpose. We'll leave it at one and see what happens. Okay, yes. Okay, let me close this. Now watch what happens if I try to add my I.O. modules. It's grayed out because I don't have any extra slots. So let me go back onto my AENT and go to properties. And I'm gonna change it from chassis size one to a chassis size of three. We're not gonna do the ASCII module, so I'm not gonna change it to four. We're just gonna change it to three so I can get my two IO cards. Okay, that's good. Now let's add our IO cards. I'll right click, new module. The first one was the IB4. There it is, create. Okay, I don't have to give this one a name. It was a version three and it's in slot one. Okay, the ENT itself is slot zero. You can see that right there. Okay, the next module I need to do is an OB4E. Okay, create. Okay, again, I don't need a name because it's a module, it's slot two and it's a version three. Excellent. Okay. Excellent, all right. So I think I'm good. I'm gonna go ahead and save my program. And now I want to add another move here. Now, what I would typically do after adding branch here is I would make a copy of this instruction, but the, I don't know what it is with version 20.05. It crashes a lot when you drag and drop branches and whatnot. So I'm just going to retype it in, move, and I'm going to bring these lights. I'm actually thinking of going back to 20.04. I just, I'm not a big fan of 20.05. And then here the destination will be my port IO and it's slot two outputs, okay? Ethernet put on all slot two outputs. Perfect. Okay, let's uh, verify our project here. Everything's looking good. I purposely made a mistake, and this is gonna uh, to show you something that a lot of people run into. So let me go ahead and do communication to active. And um, my L63 is selected. Let's go ahead and download. Okay, do I really want to download? You know, we're just working on the bench, so I don't have to worry about what's going on with the machine in the field. Okay, now I've downloaded, but I have a problem. See these yellow triangles? And the reason for this is that, you know, first of all, if I look at the actual chassis configuration of my point IO in the field here, module configuration, it's set up for a chassis size of four. And I can change that to three, but I'm going to have to pull out one of those modules if I want to clear up this error. So instead of changing this to three to match my configuration here um, and having to actually yank out that ASCII module, what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to come down here and I'm going to change this to four. And you can see I can't do that online. So let me go offline real quick. Okay, we'll change it to four. I'm not going to add the ASCII module. We're not going to do that today. And now let's re download real quick here. Download. Okay. And now look, no more yellow triangles because what's in the field is matching what's in my IO tree. Now let's take a look at the actual camera, the overhead cam that's pointing at the uh, point IO. Again, we're looking at the Ethernet one on the right hand side here. And look, we can see the outputs turning on and off, which is turning on the inputs. And uh, that's coming directly from here, from our move instruction. Okay, so it's not, uh, 
RS Logic's not fast enough to really match it up real time, but now you can see it's working where before it wasn't. So that's how easy it is. Here, let me zoom out now. That's how easy it is to add Point IO to your RS Logic 5000 version 20 project using an EMBT and L63 and uh, an AENT, you know, 1734 AENT adapter. And uh, some of the things you can run into, I mean, the biggest thing that a lot of people forget to do is change the chassis size of the AENT of that Point IO Ethernet adapter. It's very important that has to be um, match what's in your program. And I think they come from the factory as one. So you're going to have to update them and change them uh, when you go to do your program. And it has to match. Even if you have extra cards in there, um, even if you don't put the cards in your program, you have to leave slots for that. Otherwise, you have to pull all those cards out. So um, hopefully you find that helpful. In the next video, we'll do the same exact thing for control net. But I think that's enough for today. I hope everybody's having a great day, a great week. And I just want to wish you all the best. If you know anybody who needs training, please send them over to my site, theautomationschool.com, where they can learn about all kinds of stuff. Control Logics, Compact Logics, Panel View, VUSE, Micro 800, CCW. And I'm also looking for instructors. So if you know anybody who would like to teach a course at the Automation School, maybe film one at home and then post it up there and sell it alongside mine, I'd love to do that as well. But with that, I want to thank you for watching. And until next time, peace.